going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amanda, also known as Cake and Weights on Instagram. So today, oh, thank you for joining. Um, so today we are going to be talking about emotional eating. So this is something a lot of people struggle with. A lot of people come to me and ask how to overcome emotional eating, what to do while battling emotional eating, boredom eating. We saw this a lot on my team during quarantine. Um, when quarantine just started, people started working from home. They were steps away from their kitchen and they're like bored all the time because there's nothing to do um, besides binging on the Netflix shows. But uh, so I have all these tips for emotional eating, boredom eating, stress eating, you name it. Um, if it goes along with those, then I got you covered today. So the main recommendation I have here is habit shifting. So let's talk about what got you into emotional eating, boredom eating. You formed the habit to reach for food, reach for some comfort food or some sort of food while you're feeling that emotion, right? So the, the thing that triggered you was the emotion or the boredom, the stress, whatever it might be. And then your response is to go grab some food to cope with that, right? So that was your coping mechanism. So in order to solve this, we're going to habit shift. So the first thing that I want you to do is after this video, or you can pause it right here. Well, not right here, because you need to know what you gotta do. But you can pause it after I tell you what to do, is to grab a piece of paper or your notes on your phone and start writing down some things that you like to do, some hobbies, some activities, um, something that's easy to just grab and start doing right away. So whether that is journaling, one of those adult coloring books, maybe you like to, uh, do poetry or something like that, maybe you like to knit, maybe you like to do some stretching, some yoga, maybe you like to meditate, maybe you like to, there's other things, but I'm blanking right now. Um, so yeah, make a list of whatever it might be and whenever, and have that list handy. That's why maybe maybe the notes on your phone is a good idea. I know I always have my phone by me, um, so you might too <laughs> if you're like me. Um, but have that list handy, and whenever that feeling comes up and that urge to go grab food comes up, what you're gonna do is pull out that list, pick something to do, so maybe instead of going to grab your, your favorite comfort food, you're gonna start knitting, right? Um, which is awesome because you're getting your hands busy and your mind busy with uh, with doing the knitting and then it's it's not going to be easy so i guess i should put that down as a disclaimer it's not going to be easy to do this shift because your habit is telling you like you're like i need to go grab food but you're gonna fight that and you can fight it i believe in you i know you can do this um, and do that other activity so we're saying knitting right um so you're going to start knitting and then when you feel that emotion again go and grab go and grab your knitting to knit. So you're going to reform your habit from grabbing food when I feel that emotion to trigger I feel that emotion, I'm gonna go knit, you know? Doesn't that sound amazing? And I know it does sound easier than it is, but as long as you can fight yourself and get in with that, with that I'm going to do that knitting, it's going to become second nature just as right now, grabbing food is second nature. So go on, give that a try. Um, but then I also do have another tip for, I know sometimes, like I said, it's easier said than done. So I know sometimes it's gonna just feel like, no, I can't, I can't do that. I can't go and do that other activity. Like I need to go get some food. So my recommendation for that is to track your food ahead of time, right? So whatever it might be that you're feeling will make you feel better for this emotion, track it. So actually that's another thing. I like to journal while I feel these emotions because I'm working through why is food gonna make me feel better, right? So why is this certain food gonna make me feel better? What's the reality? Because you know, sometimes we eat too much and then we actually feel like crap. We feel guilty for not following our diet. Um, so it's like a whirlwind, right? So journaling through that can help you there. And then another thing that helps too is to track your food before you go and eat it. So um, whatever it might be, go ahead, track it, see how it's gonna affect your day. And as you see those numbers in real time, 
you're like, okay, I remember my goals. This is not getting me to my goals, right? Because it's a lot easier to see, especially when it comes to like comfort food. And it's usually like the calorie dense food. So it's maybe not even that much, that much food volume, but it's a lot of calories. And then you see the numbers there and you're like pulled back into reality real quick. You know what? I'm not going to grab that food. I'm going to go right in my journal now and discuss what's going on in my head. You know, because it's one of those things where there's something going on in your head, let's get it on a paper and then let's get the reality out where the food actually isn't going to be the thing that helps you. The food actually might make you feel even worse. So maybe are you doing a self-sabotaging thing? Is this common for you? How can we shift this? You know, um, so I hope that these tips were helpful for you with emotional eating. Um, this is actually something that I do teach with my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. So we go through a ton of mindset work along with the fitness and nutrition. So um, in my program, I give out personalized macro plans, personalized workouts, and then also we go through all this mindset work along the way. Uh, so I give the personalized plans while I educate along the way. So I teach everything from the very basics of what are our macros, how to get started with tracking, how to get started with workouts, and how to get started with working through your mindset blocks, all the way to creating your own plans, finding your macros, adjusting your macros, creating effective workouts, uh, so that you can be your own coach because I think that that independence is just so valuable. So I hope that you found this helpful and I hope that you will put some of those habit shifts into play next time that you are feeling emotionally eating. And if you do and if you did find this helpful, comment below, like, share this video if you know somebody else that's struggling. Um, and don't forget to subscribe for my channel as well. And also, if you do put this into place, I would love if you message me and just let me know, hey, your video was helpful for me. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah, I would really appreciate that. So thank you for watching. Thank you for joining and being a part of the Cake and Weights community. If you are interested in that coaching program I was talking about, you can apply below. I'll have the link down there below. And I would love to have you on Team Cake and Weights. So thank you for watching and join us next time.